Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five bad habits uh, that you may fall into driving a manual transmission vehicle. And the reason I'm making this video uh, is because, you know, behind the scenes there's a lot of things happening with a manual transmission that you may not be thinking about if you don't fully understand how they work. So we're going to get into these bad habits and talk about why exactly you may not want to do them. So the first one is you shouldn't rest your hand on the gear shift in a manual transmission vehicle. You shouldn't use it as a hand rest. Instead, whenever you need to shift gear, you know, do the gear shift and then take your hand off, put it back on the wheel. Do the gear shift, take your hand off, put it back on the wheel. If you need a downshift, take your hand off, put it back on the wheel. You shouldn't be resting your hand on the gear shift. So why shouldn't you rest your hand on the gear shift? Well, you have to understand what's happening within the transmission. So when you're shifting a gear, you have a selector fork and you're pushing that selector fork up against a rotating collar and you press that collar into the gear that you want to choose. So what you have happening is you have a static object that just moves back and forth, rubbing up against this rotating component uh, that's used to select the gear. And so you're going to have a little bit of wear on that selector fork when you do shift gears, but it's not much because it's a very short duration where you're pressing up against it. Now if you're leaving your hand on the gear shift while it's in gear, what's happening is you could be applying pressure on that selector fork up against that collar. So you've got a rotating component pressing up against that uh, selector fork and you can wear out that selector selector fork and so you don't want to be doing that. Now if you just put a little bit of a pressure on it, if you're not really touching it much, uh, if you're just kind of holding it in place because you're going to you know, select a, another gear next, it's not a huge deal. But you should know that putting pressure on it can cause premature wear of those gear forks because you're pressing it up against a rotating component. And you can even find uh, in owner's manuals it'll tell you not to use the gear shift as a hand rest. Now another good reason not to leave your hand on the gear shift is that it's also just a good idea to have both hands on the wheel for maximum control, uh, especially in any sort of competitive environment. So moving on to number two, uh, one bad habit is to leave it in gear while you're sitting at a stoplight. So if you come up to a stoplight, the best idea, instead of just leaving it in gear, take it out of gear, put it in neutral, and let your foot off the clutch. So why should you do this? Well, here is the pressure plate, and this is the diaphragm spring, and so this is what's gonna be engaging and disengaging your clutch. And so within your transmission, this is the throwout bearing, and so when you push in that clutch pedal, what you're doing is you're pushing this throwout bearing up against this diaphragm spring, and you're relieving pressure so that it doesn't clamp down on that clutch disc. So when you're sitting in a stoplight and you put it in gear, what you're doing is you're pressing this up against it and you can wear out these throwout bearings. Uh, it's unnecessary wear to just have it sitting there. So you can just put it in neutral, let out the clutch, and then you know it can sit there and it's not wearing up against it. Now the other thing is, uh, when you do have your clutch engaged uh, with it in neutral, you're not going to have your clutch spinning in there. Um, so you know, if you did start to have some clearance issues with your clutch, you could have some uh, premature wear just sitting there with it in gear rather than engaging it. Now, people will argue, hey, you know, you want to have it in gear just in case you need to get up and go or whatever, but you know, there's plenty of scenarios where there's going to be a car in front of you, a car behind you, things like that. Uh, there's no need to just leave it in gear, and it doesn't really take any time to put it into gear. It's a very quick thing to do. Um, and then the other thing people will say is like, hey, you know, you might get rear-ended. Uh, you want to have it in gear so that, you know, if your foot comes off the clutch, your vehicle stops. It's like, well, you should have your foot on the brake. So if you are going to get rear-ended, your foot's already going to be on the brake. I've had this happen to me twice unfortunately in my Subaru SDI where I've been uh, stopped with my foot on the brake, cars in neutral, uh, and I've been hit from behind. And it's not a big deal, you know, you keep your foot on the brake. Your kind of natural reaction uh, in an emergency situation like that is a tendency to brake because you don't want to move. You're not trying to move, so your thought is, I need to stop moving. So you hit the brake, and when your foot's already on it, you know, obviously you're just going to stay stopped. But anyways, the big point there with leaving it in neutral when you come to a stoplight is to prevent premature wear of this throwout bearing, which is going to be pressing up against that diaphragm spring. Moving on to number three, you should never use the clutch to hold yourself on a hill. And this may seem pretty obvious, but plenty of people still do it where you basically feather the throttle and the clutch pedal to get that sweet spot where your vehicle doesn't roll down the hill. But what you're doing is you're burning up the friction material on your clutch disc. So your clutch is spinning at one speed and your engine, this is the pressure plate here which sandwiches this clutch disc between the flywheel, uh, this is going to be rotating at another speed based on your throttle. So you're rotating this at one speed in order to burn bring this up to speed and in doing so you're just going to be wearing out this friction material because this is rubbing up against uh, the pressure plate and the flywheel and so you're going to be wearing out your clutch and there's just absolutely no reason to do that. 
So instead, what you should be doing is just holding the brake when you're on the hill. That seems pretty obvious. Uh, but the next question is, okay, well, how do I accelerate? Well, there's two things that you can do. Actually, probably three things. Um, a lot of modern cars now come with brake hold. And so when you're on a hill and you have the clutch pressed in, when you let your foot off the brake, they'll tend to hold you. Now, plenty of vehicles do not. For example, I don't believe this Nissan 370Z has it. And so in that case, uh, if it's not a big hill, you know, you can just kind of wait and then get onto the throttle fairly quickly, bring out your clutch a little bit so you know you're ready to do that and have a transition. You may roll a little bit back, but not much where it matters. Now, the third scenario, let's say you're on a pretty steep hill and you don't want to roll back because there's a car right behind you. Well, what you're going to do is pull the e-brake. You've got your clutch pedal in and your foot's on the brake. You can now let your foot off of the brake, assuming your e-brake's going to hold you. And so then what you want to do, you can put it in gear. Now you're going to start to ease off of the clutch where it starts to bite and you'll feel this because the car is going to start to tuck a little bit and then you're going to let off the e-brake and then you're off. Now it's a good idea to practice this on flat ground so you can get the hang of it uh, before you're actually on a hill and you need to actually do it for real. Um, so you know you can just find an empty parking lot, something like that, pull the e-brake, start to let the clutch out, you can feel it start to grab, let the e-brake down and you accelerate, you don't roll back at all. Number four, you shouldn't apply a lot of throttle when you're not at a very high engine RPM. So for example, if you're in sixth gear and I'm going 40 miles per hour right now, it's not a good idea to floor it because what you're doing is you're lugging the engine. It's at a huge gearing disadvantage and you're telling it to accelerate as hard as it can. And so you're kind of conflicting there. So rather than, you know, flooring it in sixth gear, it's a much smarter idea. Don't be lazy. Just downshift if you need more than 50 or, you know, go down to second gear if you need. You can skip gear so long as you rev match uh, and I have a separate video explaining that uh, but it is important that you know if you need to accelerate don't be lazy just downshift because you're gonna lug the engine if you have it in you know six gear at 40 miles per hour and the engine rpms are really low and you're telling it to work really hard uh, but it's at such a huge gearing disadvantage that it doesn't work out and it can cause problems and finally number five uh, one thing you don't want to do is while you're driving rest your foot uh, let's say you're on the highway rest your foot on the clutch pedal uh, and that also seems pretty obvious but it's also something that some people will commonly do and so there's several reasons why you don't want to do this first of all resting your foot on that clutch pedal uh, means your clutch may not be fully engaged and so you could have a little bit of slip uh, with your clutch disc you're not putting down full power and you can be wearing out your clutch Another reason there is you could be wearing out your throwout bearing once again because you're pressing that throwout bearing against the diaphragm spring as I showed earlier in the video. So those are five habits uh, that may be fairly common uh, for some people if you don't fully understand how manual transmission works. Uh, hopefully that cleared up the confusion and hopefully you know you can learn from that uh, if you are applying any of these bad driving techniques. You know from time to time I'll always find myself resting my hand on the gear shift lever. It's not the end of the world you know. I'm not applying a ton of pressure on it and wearing out that fork. But but there are some little things like that which you may not always be thinking about, uh, which you you know put, should put a little bit of thought into while driving a manual transmission vehicle, uh, as you could wear it out a little bit sooner. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And let's get to I guess I don't really need to make the noises. I mean, it's got a great sounding engine.